Uthman was born into the noble Umayyah family of the Quraysh tribe of Makkah. As a child, he had a privileged upbringing. Like his other family members, he became a hugely prosperous cloth merchant. Uthman's decision to embrace Islam infuriated his tribesmen so much that they became hostile and antagonistic towards him. They accused him of treachery and hurled all sorts of verbal abuse and diatribes at him. When things eventually became unbearable, he approached the Prophet for his permission to seek refuge in Abyssinia, modern Ethiopia, along with a group of other persecuted Muslims. Uthman, therefore, became one of the first Muslim men to migrate to a foreign country with his family, for the sake of Islam. He also acted as a scribe to the Prophet from time to time, and generously spent his money and wealth for the cause of Islam. For instance, on his arrival in Medina, he purchased a large well for 20,000 dirhams. Unlike caliphs Abu Bakr and Ali, Uthman was very fortunate to have become caliph at a time when the Islamic dominion was politically strong and economically prosperous. Immediately after becoming caliph, Uthman strengthened the administrative base of the vast Islamic dominion. During Umar's caliphate, the region comprising Syria, Palestine and Jordan was regarded as three separate provinces, but Caliph Uthman combined them to create one strong and united province and confirmed Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan as governor of that large region. Likewise, Caliph Uthman abolished the two-tier administration developed by Caliph Umar in Egypt and replaced it with one governor who was responsible for the governance of that strategically important province. Uthman took similar steps to improve and modernize the civil and administrative systems established by Caliph Umar in parts of Iraq and Iran. While Caliph Uthman was busy reforming the political structure of the expanding Islamic dominion, the Muslim army continued its march, both in the east and the west, and conquered many new territories. In addition to gaining control of Cyprus, the Muslim army raided parts of Persia and Armenia. With every success came more and more responsibility for Caliph Uthman. While the caliph was busy contemplating the future direction of the rapidly expanding Islamic State, the news that the Byzantine Emperor Constantine had sent a fleet of 500 ships to invade Alexandria reached him. In response, he dispatched a Muslim fleet to meet the advancing Byzantines. One of Islamic history's first major naval battles thus took place in 651. The Muslims successfully fought back the Byzantines, who fled to the island of Sicily. The caliph's political and military strategies worked exactly according to plan. Being a gentle-natured and compassionate man, he devoted all his time, wealth, and energy to the cause of Islam. But, unlike Caliph Umar, he was neither firm nor decisive in his dealings with the mischief-makers, who were bent on creating socio-political disorder within the Islamic State. Since Caliph Uthman had no intention of shedding Muslim blood, he hoped to win over the troublemakers through love and compassion. Although one cannot fail to admire his good intentions and sublime qualities, in the circumstances the strategy he pursued against a determined enemy, bent on destroying the Islamic State from within, was a wrong one. As it transpired, the enemies of Islam took advantage of the caliph's softly-softly approach and intensified their designs against the Islamic State. It was not long before they began to falsify and fabricate evidence against the caliph himself. Though he cogently refuted all their allegations publicly, his detractors were not satisfied with his explanations. As tension between the caliph and the insurgents mounted, some of the leading companions of the Prophet urged Uthman to take action against the insurgents, but he refused to do so, saying he would rather die than shed Muslim blood. Caliph Uthman was a man of principles, and he decided to stick to his principles come what might. The insurgents were not willing to relent either. As it happens, they were not interested in peace at all. Their foremost objective was to oust the caliph from power. They demanded that Uthman resign forthwith, otherwise they would kill him. Uthman replied, I do not fear death, but I do not want to shed Muslim blood. Again, a number of eminent companions of the Prophet urged him to take action against the insurgents. Yet again, he made it clear that he had no desire to shed Muslim blood. The insurgents then invaded his house and brutally murdered him while he was busy reciting the Quran. He was 80 years old. Caliph Uthman's death was a watershed in Islamic history. His assassination sent an almighty shiver down the Islamic spine, signaling the end of Islam's political unity. The Muslim world became divided, never to unify again.